that Zacchaeus, out of all of his wealth and everything that he had, was missing something very key, and that was salvation. Salvation is necessary. It is necessary. Christ died that we might receive it. And so the Bible says that, or let me just say history says first that, undoubtedly Zacchaeus was kind of curious because he had heard something about Jesus and how powerful Jesus was. As a matter of fact, it is said that he heard about Matthew being changed and transformed. And so his speculation as to his curiosity, whether his curiosity was he just wanted to see Jesus or did he want to really have relationship with Jesus. And so as we read the text, we kind of studied and tried to get inspiration and revelation, you know, from the Lord as to really what was on Zacchaeus' mind whenever he uh, pressed to see Jesus. So the Bible said because of his unpopularity, there was another challenge that he had, and it was because... He was a, a, a little man of stature. In other words, there's indication that he was a short. He was challenged with his height. But also it said that because of his popularity, he, because he wasn't popular, what had to happen, he had to be careful as he matriculated through the crowd because the crowd pressed. And because he was not popular, they could have hurt him. You know how it is when you're in a crowd and people are not popular about you, you know, they got a little something against you. And so what ultimately happens is, you know, if they see a chance to get you, then they, they, they might get you. So because he knew that he was not popular, he had to come up with another way to see Jesus. So out of all of the wealth that he had, out of everything that he had, what he did was humiliated himself so that he could climb a sycamore tree. He climbed the sycamore tree, got up in there maybe to hide out, I don't know, uh, as well as, you know, the fact that he was challenged in his height. But the Bible said he climbed up in the sycamore tree. But how many of you know that Jesus see you everywhere you go? He see exactly what you do. He know exactly what you're thinking. And so the Bible said he climbed up there, I guess, waiting to just at least see Jesus when he was passing by. You know, no doubt, maybe, he thought that he could escape because of what he heard. He knew that just Jesus' mere presence changed the atmosphere. He knew that Jesus' mere words, just by what he heard, uh, made a difference in people's lives. He knew that what he heard, you know, really, you know, the blind saw, you know, the deaf, you know, the dumb were able to talk. You know, you know he, he heard about Jesus. Isn't it something? He thought he was going to sit up in the tree, get his blessing, and then just that was okay. You can't sit in the tree and just get your blessing and expect God to not know where you are. Lord have mercy. So the Bible said as Jesus was passing by, here's what happened here now. Because he's an all-wise Savior, the Bible said there was some kind of connection between Zacchaeus and Jesus' knowledge of him being up in the tree. So, the, so, so somewhere, because of what was going on in Zacchaeus' heart, Jesus had already felt it. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? He knew he didn't see her, but he knew that someone had touched him with a great need. He's aware of all of our needs. He knew that there was a presence in his presence that had a need. So the Bible said, while he was passing by, and I can't imagine what Jesus' eyes must have looked like when he looked up in the sycamore tree and saw Zacchaeus, you know, up in the sycamore tree. The Bible said he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, make haste. In other words, quickly, don't tarry, don't fool around, come on out of the tree. That's just Mary Jackson's language. Make haste, come down out of the tree. For I must abide in your house today. Zacchaeus, you need salvation. You have wealth. You have all of the glamour. You even have the position. But Zacchaeus, you need something else other than wealth and position. You need character. You need attitude, the right attitude. You need, you know, that saving power in your life. You need salvation. You need to understand 
You need me in your life. You need to understand that it's just not enough to have wealth. You need to understand it's not just enough to be popular among people. You need to understand you need salvation in Christ. Get out of the tree. Make haste. Come on down. Because I've got to give you salvation. You won't make it without me. You won't make it without salvation. Look at the attitude and the conduct of Zacchaeus. The Bible says that he made haste. I tell you, when we learn how to really start listening to the voice of God, we won't delay. We won't hesitate. We won't keep on fooling around when he tells us what we need to do. We won't keep questioning what God has said. Get out of the tree. Come on down. I've got to abide in your house. The Bible said he came out of that tree quickly. Came on down. And you don't always like to infer maybe that there was a conversation. Or maybe there was some language between them. You know, as, you know, he was there before the Savior. The Bible says right away, perhaps that connection that was there, Zacchaeus began to do something. The Bible said he was convicted so with just the mere presence of the Lord being in his life. The Bible said right away in the midst of all the people, he began to confess before Jesus. He said, Master, he said, if there's anything, let, now listen what he said now. Anything, in other words, what he said was, he said, all the possessions that I have, first of all, what I want is I want to take my possessions and distribute all of my possessions among the poor. Didn't Jesus ask the rich man, that little rich young ruler, and he said, oh, no, I can't let go of my possessions. He said, first of all, let me take all of my possessions and distribute them amongst the poor. And then he said, if I have mistreated or taken anything, you know, unjustly, he said, Master, I, I, I return it back, you know, fourfold. If you've robbed God from his tithes, you owe him. If you do not pay your tithes, you owe him. If you don't believe in tithing, you still owe him. He said, if there's anything that I've taken, he says, return it back. For I understand one thing about my position right now. I understand the immediate call of salvation in my life from you, Savior. So the Bible said that right away, Zacchaeus took Jesus home with him. But listen to what the scripture said. The Bible said all of those that were around look and begin to murmur at Jesus. Church folk, we cannot murmur at what Christ wants to do in our lives. They begin to murmur because Jesus dwelt with publicans and sinners. They did not like the fact that he was with a sinner. But how many of you know that Christ doesn't care who you are. He let us know in that scripture right at the end there. I came not to save those that are righteous, but I came to seek and to save those that understand what being lost is really all about. I came to seek and to save those that are really lost. For you see, Zacchaeus was a lost man. And the Bible says that he needed salvation in his life. And he needed to have the right conversation with Jesus. But after that conversation with Jesus, he recognized his lost condition. He recognized that he was a sinner. And he appealed to the Lord to save his soul. And the Bible says, listen to this, after the Lord saved his soul, it is said in history after Zacchaeus remained saved in the Lord, he went back to his household. He went back to his community and began to tell of the goodness of the Lord. He began to tell his story, how Christ saw him roosted up in a sycamore tree. How Christ saw him in the condition that he was in. Imagine he told the people, um, 
God told me to come out of the tree and come on down. Come down from my position. Come down from my haughty thoughts. Come down from me thinking I was somebody special. Come on down so I can build you back up. Build you back up in the place you belong. Build you back up in your spiritual life. Build you back up in your walk. Build you back up in your talk. Come on, Zacchaeus. You got the right one now. You have a Savior in your life. As Zacchaeus began to tell his story, it is said that his whole household was changed because of that immediate call of salvation in his life. I'm here to tell you today, there's an immediate call for salvation right now. For every one of us, yeah, we talk the talk, but we've got to walk the walk. Pastor, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Show no baptized. But are you free? Are you free? Are you free? Are you liberated from all your problems and all your struggles? Get out of the tree. Come on down and talk to the Lord. Get out of your tree. Get out of your comfortable place. Get out of your comfortable position. For the Lord is causing discomfort. For the Lord is causing discomfort to make you feel better. The Lord is causing discomfort so that you can rise to the place you ought to be in Him. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, you need salvation right now. Not tomorrow, but right now. But I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to show you my power. I'm going to show you how I will manifest myself in your life. I'm going to show you who I am. I don't care about your money. You need God. I don't care about your job. You need God. I don't care about your status. You need God. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the Pope. You need the Lord. I don't care if you're the President. You need the Lord. I don't care if you're a city official. You need the Lord. Get out of your tree. For there's an immediate call to salvation. I came to seek and to save every man, woman, boy, girl that is lost, lost in their sins, lost in bondage, lost in their past, even lost, lost in their present, even lost, lost in the future because they cannot see Christ. He went up in the tree to get a man or look at a man, but he saw the Savior and received that Savior in his life. There is an immediate call for salvation, true salvation, true salvation in your life. He repented. He repented. Even a saint sometimes, you know when you mess up, you got to go back and repent. You got to repent. You got to repent. Don't expect the Holy Ghost to do all the work. You go back. And then let the Holy Ghost keep you. You won't do it again. He repented. And then he confessed. He confessed. And then he received. He received the salvation. And the abundance. So I imagine Jesus said to him, So... You thought, you thought you were going to hide out in that sycamore tree, huh? Uh-huh. I know you wanted to see me. I know you were short in stature, but see, you thought you were just going to get a glimpse of me, huh? Hmm. You just thought. But I saw you. Come on down out of that tree. Come on down here and talk man to man. You've been taking people's money. You've been stealing. You haven't given to the poor like you should. You haven't paid your tithes like you should. You keep saying that it's not in the Bible. Yes, it is. You keep saying, yeah, they're using my money. It's not your money. It's 
God's money. He blesses you with it. And so we're to use it wisely. There's an immediate call to salvation. All of those that keep on fooling around, don't get lost without it. Don't get lost without it. So what we're going to do, we're going to ask you all to stand. There's an immediate call. If there's one that don't know the Lord, because you know what? I'm not going to keep you all all day on Sunday. If you want the Lord in your life, I want you to just come on up here. That's it. If you want the Lord in your life, if you're backslidden, if you're half-stepping, the Lord's here. There's an immediate call for salvation.